Hello, this is Mrs. Nearing, and in this video we're going to talk through some of the variables affecting acid strength. So if we're thinking about what it means to be an acid, what acids are, so acids are hydrogen-containing substances that donate protons to water, but not all hydrogen-containing compounds are acids. We want to examine what factors determine whether or not a substance will behave as an acid, and what factors determine whether the acid will be strong or weak. So we're going to look, take a look at some groups of molecules and look for patterns, the relationship between acid strength and some variable like electronegativity or bond energy. And as we're doing this, you want to remember that the larger the K value, the stronger the acid. So in this first group, I noticed that they're organized so that the strength increases going up here. And what I notice is as we go up this column, there's greater electronegativity. So it seems like the pattern here is that the greater the electronegativity, the stronger the acid. So the greater the acid strength. All right, so that's the first pattern I'm noticing. Let's look down at this next grouping. So in this one, we're not given electronegativities. We're just looking at atomic radius and bond energy. And you might notice that as the atomic radius um, increases, the bond energy decreases. So there's like an inverse relationship here. So the larger the atom, the, the greater the bond distance and the easier that bond is to break. So it looks like the strongest acid is down here at the bottom and the strongest acid is correlating to the largest radius and the therefore the weakest bond energy. So as the, looks like as you increase the bond energy, you are going to decrease your acid strength. Or we can think of it this way, that the ones with the lower bond energies are the strongest acids. So it looks like to be a good acid, we want to have high electronegativity of the atom that your hydrogen is bonded to, and you want that bond to be relatively weak. Let's look down at this next group down here. It seems like in this group, as you um, increase in the, as your bond energy increases, we see an, um, an inverse relationship here again with your acid strength. So we see the same pattern here that as you, the lower the bond energy, the greater the acid strength is. But it seems like our previous pattern is not holding true here. So in, in that very first group, we noticed that the greater electronegativity was the stronger the acid. But notice right here, in within this grouping, the atom with the greater electronegativity, chlorine, is actually the weakest atom in this group. So it seems like we need to consider both variables, both electronegativity and um, bond energy when we're trying to predict the strength. And let me scroll down here to a visual where you can see how this kind of plays out here with, so these examples we've been looking at, groups one, two, and three, they're all something we call binary acids, which means it's just hydrogen and one other element. And the two factors that determine whether a binary substance is going to be an acid is that the bond needs to be polar with the partial positive charge on the hydrogen. So this is gonna happen when the electronegativity of the element it's attached to is relatively large. So you can see some examples here. You're only going to, the substance is only going to be an acid if this bond is polar with the partial positive charge on the hydrogen. And the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid is going to be because the hydrogen is less likely to break off. So notice that my stronger acids have the weaker bond energies and my weak acid has a relatively strong bond energy. So there's two variables to consider here if we look at this table on the right. Um, as you go across the periodic table, as electronegativity increases, it's going to become more acidic. But you also want to consider the atomic radius, which is going to determine the bond strength. So notice as you go down the table, the atomic radius gets larger. And so that hydrogen um, bond, again, by hydrogen bond, I mean the hydrogen bonded to that element Y. Um, that bond is going to get weaker, so that acid is going to get stronger. So there's two kind of variables to consider here. And notice that within the, um, halo within the halogens, 
Most of the halogens form strong acids, like HCl, HBr, HI are all strong acids, but HF is actually a weak acid, and that's because even though this bond is very polar, it has a relatively high bond energy. So let's look up at, back up here at our data set. If you compare HF, which is up here, with these ones down here, HF has a very polar bond, so its hydrogen has a very strong partial positive charge, and that would make us think it'd be a good acid, but its bond energy is much higher than the bond energies of the other halogens. So it's 136 versus this one's 103. So that is why HF actually ends up being a weak acid instead of a strong acid. It's this bond energy that's kind of holding it back there. So those are two variables to consider when we're thinking about binary acids. Now we're going to look at a second group of acids. These are called oxo acids. These all have an oxygen in them. And within the oxo acids, we will notice that as electronegativity increases, so as you increase um, electronegativity, let's say eneg, um, the acid strength increases. And for this one, there are not any exceptions here. So as your electronegativity increases, acid strength increases. If we look down here at this group of oxo acids, there's another pattern we might notice that has to do with the number of oxygen. So notice here, this one is an H and an N bonded to some oxygens. This is an H and a Cl bonded to some oxygens. And within each group, as you increase the number of oxygens, the acid becomes stronger. So like HNO2 has two oxygens, HNO3 has three oxygens, HNO3 is a stronger acid. Here with your chlorine, you go from having two oxygens to three oxygens to four oxygens, and my acid gets stronger and stronger. So as you increase the number of oxygens, your acid strength is going to increase for your oxo anions. And if we look down here, we can see these two variables um, described for your oxo acids. So again, those are ones where you have a hydrogen bonded to what we call an oxo anion, so like a polyatomic ion containing oxygen. As the electronegativity of this um, non-oxygen element increases, the strength of the acid increases. And as you increase the number of oxygens, the acid strength increases. And this all has to do with the more oxygens you have or the stronger the electronegativity, the more it is going to kind of pull the electron density away over to this side of the molecule. And that's going to make this bond to the hydrogen easier to break. So these are all variables that are make the hydrogen more positive and more likely to kind of break off. So if we're looking down here at some practice problems, um, we want to be able to apply these trends here. So I'm just going to kind of pick and choose a couple of them to look at. So like this is a problem from the 2009 exam, problem one. We can see that we have two acids, HOCl and HOBr. The first question says, which of the two acids is stronger? Justify your answer in terms of Ka. So this question, all you have to do, all you really need is to know what Ka represents. So the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. So it looks like from this data, um, HOCl is the stronger acid because it has a larger Ka value. And we can also make an argument based on what we know that since chlorine is more electronegative than bromine, that is why it is a stronger acid and it has a larger Ka value. If you, I'm going to skip B for right now, if you go down to C, hypoiotis acid has the formula HOI. If you look on the periodic table, um, HOI would be, it goes chlorine, bromine, iodine, so it would be just below it. So we have this trend here as we go um, down a column the electronegativity decreases, and so the acid strength decreases. Because remember this trend we just said here, as electronegativity increases, acid strength increases, and vice versa here. So we would predict that HOI is going to be a weaker acid, and that's because I is less electronegative, then chlorine and bromine. Um, so that's the trend we're using there. Looking at problem number two, this one we're comparing binary acids. So thinking about this one, the strongest acid in each of the following sets. Um, well, we know we want to consider both um, bond polarity and bond energy. And if we look back up at this table we saw up here, 
we can see that as we go down a column here with my halogens, the acids become increasingly stronger because they're all relatively polar bonds. But as you go down a column, the radius of this atom, the fluorine, chlorine, bromine increases. This bond becomes weaker so that it's easier for that hydrogen ion to break off. So when you're looking at your halogens, the one that is closer to the bottom of the periodic table is going to be the stronger one. Okay, so this is, we got a, you know, larger atomic radius, which is going to give us a weaker bond, and that's going to allow the H off to break, the H plus ion to break off easier. And notice how the trend here is different, right, for binary acids versus oxo acids. In the oxo acids, HOBr, you know, would be stronger than, like, let's look at this one. In the oxo acids, HOCl is stronger than HOI, but in the um, binary acids, whoops, I just realized I circled the wrong one down here, HI would be the stronger one because it is further down the periodic table, so it is going to have a larger atomic radius uh, and a weaker bond. So with the oxo acids, you're only looking at electronegativity of that element. With the binary ones, you want to think about the radius of that element, which is going to affect the bond strength, um, and that will affect the acid strength there. Okay, glad we caught that one. All right, looking at ones like problem number three, this one's a tricky one because you're given conjugate bases, basically. So F minus, you can think of as the conjugate um, base of HF. And you can think of Cl minus as the conjugate base of HCl. Because remember, the, if you think about what we're talking about, the let's write this out, HCl plus water is going to be a hydrogen giver. After it gives a hydrogen to water, what's left behind is Cl minus and H3O plus. So we say that HCl is an acid, and we would say that Cl minus is the conjugate base of the acid HCl. So there is this relationship that the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base, and vice versa. So the so what you want to do is you want to look at these two acids and say which is the stronger acid. Well, I know HF is one of my weak acids. HCl is a strong acid. So the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. The weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. So F minus is going to be the stronger base of those two. And the rule of thumb is that weak pairs with weak and strong pairs with neutral. So the conjugate of a strong acid is actually going to be neutral. It is so weak we don't even really think of it as a base. And with these two over here, you want to compare uh, the strength of their conjugate acids. So whichever one would be the stronger con the stronger acid is going to have the weaker conjugate base. So the weaker of these two acids is going to have the strongest conjugate base. So that's an important relationship that gets kind of tricky. We'll keep coming back to that. Um, look at this one, number four, we've got these oxy acids. You want to arrange them in order of increasing strength. It looks like they all have this. So with oxo acids, you want to consider um, number of oxygens and electronegativity. So it looks like these ones all have three oxygens. So the variable we're considering is just electronegativity. So the one who is the most electronegative is going to be the strongest acid. So that looking at your periodic table, I believe it goes chlorine, bromine, iodine. So your the one containing chlorine is going to be the strongest, and then the one containing bromine, and then the one containing iodine. And keep in mind, this is the opposite. If we had been talking about the binary acids, the order would actually be opposite. It would be HI would be the strongest, and then um, HBr, and then HCl. Because with the binary ones, we're looking at the you know bond strength here, which is going to be affected by what this H is bonded to. The reason why here you don't have to consider the you know the bond the you know radius and the bond strength is because in these cases the H is always bonded to an O. And what you're ch so this is relatively constant. What you're changing here is just um, electronegativity of this element over here. So 
in this last set, we're looking at, again, some oxy, -ana um, oxy acids, whatever you want to call them. And so with the oxy acids, you want to consider, again, the electronegativity of the element and how many oxygens are attached to it. And it looks like this case, they both involve iodine, so that variable is the same. The only thing we're changing is how many oxygens are attached. So the strongest acid is going to be the one with uh, more oxygen atoms attached to it. So the main takeaway if you want to come back here is that when you have binary acids, in order to be a good binary acid, you need to have a polar bond with a partial positive charge on the hydrogen. And the stronger the bond, the weaker the acid. So the weaker the bond, the stronger the acid is going to be. And there's this relationship between radius and bond strength. So it ends up working out to be a trend on the periodic table. So as you go down the periodic table and the radius gets bigger, the bond energy gets smaller, so that bond is weaker, so they become better acids as you go down a periodic table. When you're looking at the um, oxo acids, the ones involving oxygen, as the electronegativity of that other element that's not oxygen increases, the acid strength increases, and the more oxygens you have bonded to the Y, the stronger the acid. And those both have to do with the fact that you are pulling that electron density towards the other parts of the molecule and therefore weakening the bond to the hydrogen, allowing that hydrogen to break off and ionize more easily. All right. Thanks for listening and let me know if you have 